Commander John Alden stood at the helm of the USS Horizon, a state-of-the-art exploration vessel commissioned by the Earth Space Command. The ship, equipped with the latest sensors and navigational systems, drifted through the uncharted sectors on the outer rim of known space. The mission was routine but essential. Map unexplored territories and identify potential resources. As the horizon approached a cluster of dead stars, an anomaly caught the attention of the crew. The ship's main sensor operator, Lieutenant Mark Jensen, adjusted the sensors to focus on the irregular readings. The screen flickered and then stabilized, revealing a massive structure partially obscured by a nearby nebula. Commander, you need to see this, Mark called out. John approached the main display, his eyes narrowing as he analyzed the data streaming live on the screen. Enhance that sector, Mark. Let's get a clearer image, John directed, his voice steady, betraying none of his rising curiosity. Mark complied, and the image sharpened, revealing the silhouette of a colossal structure, its architecture unlike anything previously documented. It floated in space, silent and imposing, reflecting the light from distant stars off its metallic surface. Is that what I think it is? John murmured, more to himself than to anyone else. It looks like a megastructure, sir. I've never seen anything like it. Preliminary scans suggest it's ancient, but there's no decay or debris. It's in pristine condition, Mark replied, his tone a mix of awe and excitement. John turned to his communications officer. Send a secure message back to Earth Command. Inform them of our discovery and maintain communication silence until further notice. We don't want any uninvited guests. Right away, Commander the officer responded, his fingers moving swiftly over the console. Turning back to the main screen, John considered their next steps. He decided they needed a closer look. Helm, set a course for the structure. Approach with caution. We're not sure what we're dealing with here. The USS Horizon maneuvered closer to the structure, which they had temporarily dubbed Aegis, after the ancient Earth deity associated with protection. As they approached, the ship's advanced scanners began to pick up more details. The structure was not just large, it was on a scale that dwarfed any human or known alien construction. Dr. Leo Maxwell, the ship's lead scientist, joined John at the display. John, if what I'm seeing is correct, this structure could be more than just a relic. It might contain technologies far beyond our current understanding, Leo said, his voice filled with a scientist's enthusiasm for the unknown. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Leo. First, we need to ensure it's safe, John cautioned. Agreed, but think of the potential, Leo insisted, not willing to downplay his excitement. The horizon continued its careful approach. Finally, they were close enough to deploy a small reconnaissance drone. The drone, piloted remotely from the horizon, entered through an opening that resembled an airlock, disappearing into the bowels of Aegis. John, Leo, and the rest of the bridge crew watched the drone's feed. The interior was illuminated by the drone's lights, revealing hallways lined with unknown alloys and walls adorned with symbols that did not match any known languages or patterns. This is incredible, Leo whispered, his eyes not leaving the screen. Let's wait and see what else it has in store for us. Keep the drone on a tight leash and let's avoid any surprises, John replied, his focus absolute. After several minutes of exploration, the drone encountered what appeared to be a central chamber. The room was filled with consoles and holographic displays, dormant but intact. Looks like we found the control center, Mark noted. Everything is well preserved. It's as if this place was waiting for us, John nodded. Or waiting for anyone capable of finding it. All right, keep the drone there. We need to analyze everything we can remotely before we consider sending in a team. The discovery of Aegis marked a new chapter for humanity. It promised new knowledge and technology, but also brought new dangers. John knew they had to tread carefully. The future might well depend on the choices they made in the coming days. Maintain vigilance, everyone. We're not alone out here, and this discovery could attract more than just scientific interest, John concluded, his gaze fixed on the live feed from Aegis. Admiral Garrus stood in the command center of the Galactic Council's flagship, overseeing the flurry of activity around him. The vast room buzzed with the voices of officers and the soft hum of advanced computing systems. 
His gaze was fixed on the large holographic display that showed a live feed of the newly discovered megastructure, now known as Aegis. The news of Aegis's discovery had reached the Galactic Council shortly after Commander John Alden's initial report was sent to Earth Command. The Council, a conglomerate of various alien species that governed much of the galaxy, recognized the potential implications of such a find. An emergency session was convened to discuss the situation. We must act swiftly, Garrus had argued during the session. This structure could hold technologies that would disrupt the balance of power in the galaxy. We cannot allow it to remain solely under human control. The council members had debated vigorously. Some favored a cautious approach, proposing further surveillance and research. Others echoed Garrus's concerns about security and the strategic disadvantage of inaction. In the end, Garrus's argument prevailed. The Council granted him authority to lead a task force to Aegis. His orders were to secure the megastructure and evaluate its potential threats and benefits. The priority was clear. Ensure that no single faction, especially not humanity, could claim dominion over Aegis without Council oversight. Admiral, the fleet is ready to depart on your command, reported Captain Lyra, his second-in-command. She was a seasoned officer from one of the Council's member species, known for her tactical acumen. Very well. Set course for Aegis. Engage stealth mode until we are within range. We don't want to alert the humans to our approach any sooner than necessary, Garrus instructed, his voice calm but authoritative. The fleet, consisting of several dozen warships equipped with the latest armament and cloaking technology, slipped through space towards the location of Aegis. The journey was swift, utilizing the Council's advanced propulsion systems that allowed for faster-than-light travel. As they neared the megastructure, Garrus observed it through the flagship's enhanced visual sensors. Aegis loomed large on the screen, its size and design unlike anything he had seen in his extensive military career. Prepare to establish a perimeter around Aegis. I want all ships at ready status. Deploy scanning drones. I need a full analysis of that structure. Garrus commanded, pointing towards the holographic image of Aegis that dominated the room. Yes, Admiral, Captain Lyra responded, relaying his orders to the fleet. The drones were small, agile, and equipped with a range of scientific instruments and surveillance equipment. They darted towards Aegis, quickly beginning their work of mapping the exterior and searching for any signs of defensive capabilities. Meanwhile, Garrus initiated a secure communication link back to the Galactic Council. Counselors, we have arrived at Aegis and are beginning our operations. I will keep you informed of all developments, he reported. Admiral Garrus, proceed with caution. Remember, we seek knowledge and security, not confrontation, came the response from one of the senior counselors, his tone a reminder of the delicate nature of their mission. Garrus acknowledged the instruction with a nod, though the channel was audio only. Understood, Counselor. We will act in the best interests of the Council. Back on the command deck, the first reports from the scanning drones started to come in. Admiral, the drones have not detected any active weapon systems, but the structure's hull composition is unlike anything we've cataloged. It appears extremely durable, possibly capable of withstanding severe assaults, reported one of the technical officers. That's good to know. Continue monitoring. I don't want any surprises, Garrus replied, his mind racing through possible scenarios. As he awaited further data... Garrus prepared to make contact with the human ship. It was a delicate moment, requiring a balance of diplomacy and resolve. Open a channel to the USS Horizon, Captain Lyra. Let's see if Commander Alden is as reasonable as they say. With the communication channel open, Garrus's voice boomed through the speakers of both the Council fleet and the USS Horizon. Commander Alden, this is Admiral Garrus of the Galactic Council. We need to discuss the status of this structure you call Aegis. Garrus waited for a response, aware that the next few exchanges might well determine the fate of interstellar relations for years to come. Commander John Alden led his team deeper into the bowels of Aegis. The air inside the megastructure was cool and still, as if it had been untouched for millennia. Each hallway and chamber they passed through was more intricate than the last, lined with panels and filled with equipment whose purpose was yet to be deciphered. Dr. Leo Maxwell followed closely, his device scanning each piece of technology they encountered. The architecture here, 
It's not just advanced, it's revolutionary, Leo remarked, his voice filled with a mix of reverence and excitement. He paused to examine a console, its surface covered in symbols that glowed faintly under his touch. Any luck interpreting these symbols? John asked, watching Leo's every move. Not yet, Leo replied, tapping on his device. But every data point we gather tells us this place was built by a civilization that mastered energy and space on scales we can only imagine. As they ventured further, the team came upon a large atrium. The center of the room featured a dormant holographic projector. Leo approached cautiously, adjusting his device to interface with the console. With a few precise adjustments, the room was suddenly filled with light as the projector sputtered to life, casting a detailed holographic map of the galaxy across the chamber. Would you look at that? exclaimed one of the team members, his face lit by the light of a thousand stars projected around them. Leo analyzed the map, pointing to various sectors. This map is incredibly detailed. It includes regions of space even the Galactic Council has not charted. See here? These markers could indicate other structures or colonies established by the creators of Aegis. John nodded absorbing the implications. This changes everything. Aegis isn't just a relic, it's a beacon, a library. He turned to his communications officer. Keep this information secure. The last thing we need is a leak that could start a gold rush or worse, a war. Understood, Commander, the officer replied, encrypting the data stream back to Earth. The exploration continued, with the team discovering more about the structure's creators with each step. They stumbled upon what appeared to be a research lab. Tables were strewn with artifacts, some of which were clearly scientific instruments, while others were more enigmatic. Leo picked up a cylindrical device, examining it under his handheld scanner. This may have been used for energy manipulation, he hypothesized, his eyes narrowing as he read the data. Incredible, the efficiency ratings are off our charts. As they moved through the lab, a series of pictographs caught John's attention. They depicted various scenes, the construction of Aegis, peaceful gatherings of various alien species, and a dark series of panels showing a celestial event, a supernova perhaps, or something more sinister. These images tell a story, John said, gesturing to the pictographs. Aegis might have been a sanctuary, a place of gathering for many species, or a warning about a disaster they faced. Leo nodded, recording the images. We need more time to decode all this. There's a wealth of knowledge here that could benefit everyone in the galaxy. John agreed. Let's document everything we can and set up remote monitoring stations. We can't let this knowledge fall into the wrong hands. The day's discoveries had been profound. Aegis was no mere outpost. It was a testament to a lost civilization's achievements, and perhaps their failures. The implications of their findings were not lost on John as he prepared his report to Earth Command. We tread carefully, John decided, as they made their way back to the rendezvous point. Aegis is not just a technological marvel, it's a cultural heritage site for a civilization we know nothing about. As the team exited the structure, John looked back at the silent, waiting megastructure. Aegis was more than an ancient relic. It was a bridge to the past and a beacon for the future, holding secrets that could change the course of human history. Commander John Alden watched from the bridge of the USS Horizon as the Galactic Council's fleet maneuvered into position around Aegis. The fleet, led by Admiral Garrus, was an impressive show of force, with ships that bristled with weaponry and advanced defensive systems. The Council had clearly not taken the discovery of Aegis lightly, and their swift arrival spoke volumes about their concerns regarding the megastructure's potential. Commander Alden, this is Admiral Garrus, came the voice over the communications channel, formal and imposing. Under the authority of the Galactic Council, you are ordered to cease all operations and prepare to hand over control of the structure. John stood firm, his gaze fixed on the screen displaying the Admiral's image. Admiral, Aegis is a discovery of significant scientific and historical importance. We are prepared to share our findings, but we will not relinquish control without proper consultation and agreement. Garrus's expression hardened. You are in no position to negotiate, Commander. You have one hour to comply, or we will take necessary action to secure the structure. The communication ended abruptly, leaving the bridge in tense silence. 
John turned to his crew, his voice calm but determined. Prepare for a potential engagement, but keep our weapons systems offline. We're not here to start a war. As the Horizons crew scrambled to follow his orders, John initiated a secure video call to Earth Command, quickly briefing them on the situation. We need diplomatic support here. The Council is threatening military action, and we may not be able to hold them off. Back on the bridge, Dr. Leo Maxwell approached John, concern etched on his face. John, if they take Aegis, there's no telling what they'll do with the technology inside. We've barely scratched the surface of understanding it. I know, Leo, John replied, watching the Council fleet's movements. That's why we need to buy time. Outside, the Council's ships formed a tight blockade, effectively cutting off the horizon's path of retreat. Admiral Garrus, aboard his flagship, monitored the situation, ready to act the moment his deadline expired. On the horizon, preparations were underway. The crew fortified their positions and secured all sensitive data. John, understanding the gravity of the situation, addressed his team reinforcing the importance of restraint and clear heads. Remember, our goal is to de-escalate and negotiate, he reiterated. Keep communications open, and let's hope for a peaceful resolution. As the hour drew to a close, Garrus contacted John again. Your time is up, Commander. Are you going to comply, or do we need to proceed by force? John responded firmly. We are still prepared to negotiate, Admiral. There's no need for conflict. Let's discuss this. Garrus paused, considering the offer. Very well, Commander. I'm sending my terms to your ship. We'll expect your full cooperation in facilitating our teams to take over the structure. John reviewed the terms, which demanded unconditional access to Aegis for the Council's scientists and military personnel, with oversight from the Council alone. He knew accepting these terms could potentially lead to the misuse of Aegis's technologies. Admiral, I propose a joint oversight. Let's work together on this, with equal access for both human and council teams, John countered, hoping to find some middle ground. Garrus, aware of the delicate balance of power and the eyes of the council upon him, hesitated. I will consider your proposal, Commander, but know this. Our patience has limits. As communications ceased, tension on the horizon remained high. John convened with his senior officers, planning their next moves, Keep monitoring their communications and movements. We need to be ready for anything. The Siege of Aegis marked a critical moment, not just for the fate of the megastructure, but for human relations with the Galactic Council. As both sides waited for the other to blink, the potential for groundbreaking cooperation or devastating conflict hung in the balance. Commander John Alden and Dr. Leo Maxwell stood in the control center of Aegis, surrounded by dormant consoles and ancient machinery. The tension from the Galactic Council's siege was palpable, but within the megastructure's walls, a different pressure brewed, a race against time to unlock Aegis's latent capabilities. Leo, any progress? John asked, his voice echoing slightly in the vast chamber. Leo was hunched over a console, his fingers flying over the alien interface, aided by a translation device they had hastily configured. I think I'm close, John. These symbols are part of a command sequence. If my guess is correct, they could activate the structure's defense mechanisms, he explained, not taking his eyes off the screen. John nodded, watching the displays intently. Do it. We need something to give us leverage, and right now, our best bet is showing the Council that Aegis isn't defenseless. Leo pressed a series of commands into the console. For a moment, nothing happened, and the weight of disappointment began to settle in. Then, without warning, the room vibrated as deep, resonant hums filled the air, signaling the awakening of the megastructure. It's working! Leo exclaimed, a broad smile breaking across his face as lights flickered on throughout the control center, revealing lines and patterns on the walls that had been invisible in the dark. On the bridge of the Galactic Council's flagship, Admiral Garrus observed the sudden activation of Aegis. The structure lit up like a beacon, its surface shimmering with energy shields that hadn't been there moments before. Report, Garrus demanded, turning to his tactical officer. Sir, Aegis has activated some sort of shield technology. Our initial scans can't penetrate it. 
It appears to have defensive capabilities we didn't anticipate, the officer reported, his tone laced with surprise and concern. Back inside Aegis, John and Leo watched as the holographic displays sprang to life, showing detailed schematics of the structure and its systems. Look at this, John. Aegis isn't just a relic. It's a fortress, possibly one of the most advanced ever built, Leo said, his voice filled with awe. John approached one of the displays, studying the readouts. Can we control the defenses from here? Yes, but it's going to take some time to fully understand how to operate them effectively. For now, I've activated what seems to be a passive defense mode. It should keep us safe from immediate threats, Leo replied, his fingers continuing to dance across the console as he worked to unlock more of Aegis's secrets. John keyed his communicator. All hands, this is the commander. We've managed to activate Aegis's defensive systems. Maintain alert status, but stand down from battle stations. We're not out of the woods yet, but this should buy us some time. Relief was evident in the responses that crackled through the communicator, the crew's morale buoyed by the news. Commander Alden, this is Admiral Garrus, the comlink activated once more, the Admiral's voice now carrying a note of caution that had been absent before. We've observed your activation of the structure's defenses. I suggest we resume negotiations. John glanced at Leo, a wry smile forming. It seems we have their attention now. Let's see if we can use this as a stepping stone towards a peaceful resolution. Agreed, Commander. I'll prepare a new proposal, one that reflects our current... Negotiating position, Leo said. The hint of a smirk on his face as he returned to his work. John returned to the bridge, ready to negotiate from a position of strength their hands significantly strengthened by the revelation of Aegis's power. The balance of power had shifted, and with it, the potential outcomes of their standoff with the Galactic Council. Commander John Alden and Admiral Garrus faced each other on the communication screen, the tension of previous confrontations giving way to a cautious diplomacy. John was in his office aboard the USS Horizon. The blueprints of Aegis's defensive systems displayed prominently behind him, a subtle reminder of the newfound leverage. Admiral Garrus, given our current capabilities and your strategic needs, I propose a joint oversight of Aegis, John began, his tone firm yet open to negotiation. This includes equal access for both human and council teams, supervised by a joint committee. We believe this approach benefits all parties and maintains peace. Garrus, aboard his flagship, considered John's proposal carefully. His expression was unreadable, a testament to his years of experience in interstellar negotiations. Commander, while your proposal has merit, the Council has concerns about security and the potential misuse of Aegis's technology. How do you propose we address these issues? John was prepared for this question. We can establish a protocol for technology sharing that includes safeguards against weaponization. Additionally, we can have a phased approach to research, starting with non-military applications to build trust. Garrus nodded slowly, his fingers tapping on the armrest of his chair. That's a reasonable start. However, the Council will require regular reports and the right to audit operations to ensure compliance. Transparency will be key here, Commander. Agreed, Admiral. Transparency and regular audits are acceptable. We also suggest third-party oversight from neutral species to ensure unbiased supervision, John replied, showing his commitment to a balanced approach. The negotiations continued, with both leaders discussing various details, from security protocols to the staffing of the research teams. Each point was meticulously debated, with compromises made on both sides. John knew that the success of this negotiation hinged on building a foundation of mutual respect and cooperation. After several hours, Garrus leaned back in his chair, a sign that the conversation was nearing its conclusion. Commander Alden, it seems we have a preliminary agreement. I must present this to the Council for approval, but I am optimistic. You have been, I concede, a formidable negotiator. John allowed himself a small smile. Thank you, Admiral. I look forward to working together for the betterment of all our peoples. Please keep me informed of the Council's decision. As will I, Commander. Until then, Garrus replied, ending the communication. Once the screen went dark, John turned to his communications officer. Send a full report of our discussion to Earth Command. 
Highlight the terms and our emphasis on peaceful utilization of Aegis. Yes, sir, the officer responded, typing swiftly. John then summoned Dr. Leo Maxwell to his office. When Leo arrived, he looked expectant, his usual enthusiasm tempered by the gravity of their situation. Leo, the council is considering our proposal. It looks promising, but we'll need to start organizing the joint research teams and prepare for council audits, John briefed him already thinking ahead to the implementation phase. Leo nodded, his mind racing with the possibilities. I'll begin by cataloging all technologies and artifacts we deem shareable. I'll make sure everything is double-checked for safety and security concerns. Good. And work with our security teams to ensure our protocols are tight. The last thing we need is an incident that could jeopardize this agreement, John added, knowing the fragile nature of their arrangement. As Leo left to start his preparations, John gazed out the viewport at the looming structure of Aegis. The megastructure was not just a relic of the past, but a beacon for the future. The successful negotiation had not only averted a potential conflict, but had also opened up a pathway for unprecedented cooperation across the galaxy. John felt a cautious optimism. The road ahead would be challenging, filled with scrutiny, and the need for meticulous management. But for the first time since their arrival at Aegis, a genuine hope for a peaceful future seemed within reach. The USS Horizon hummed quietly as Commander John Alden reviewed the final joint oversight proposal he was about to send to Admiral Garrus. The agreement seemed fair, a solid foundation for peace and mutual exploration. Yet a nagging doubt lingered in the back of his mind, a reminder that in politics, especially galactic politics, not all intentions were transparent. His contemplation was interrupted by an urgent message from his chief security officer, Lieutenant Marcus Reed. Commander, you need to see this immediately. Marcus's voice was tense, a hint of urgency that prompted John to respond without hesitation. On my way, John replied, striding briskly to the security command center. Upon arrival, he found Marcus and several officers huddled around a monitor displaying security footage from Aegis's perimeter. What's the situation? John asked. We've detected unauthorized access attempts near the eastern airlock of Aegis. Our surveillance drones caught glimpses of what appear to be Council Special Forces, Marcus reported, his face grave as he played the footage. The grainy video showed a group of heavily armed figures using sophisticated equipment to bypass the airlock's security protocols. Are they trying to infiltrate Aegis? John's voice was flat, his initial suspicions turning into a cold realization. It looks that way, sir. I don't think they're here to conduct a friendly inspection, Marcus replied dryly. John's jaw tightened. This was a clear violation of the trust he had tried to establish with Garrus. Alert all teams. I want Aegis locked down. No one gets in or out without my say-so and get me a direct line to Admiral Garrus now. Minutes later, John faced Garrus on the communication screen, his expression stern. Admiral, I have evidence of an unauthorized council military operation attempting to infiltrate Aegis. Can you explain this? Garrus, caught off guard, frowned deeply. Commander, I assure you I have no knowledge of such operations. I will investigate immediately and... Admiral, these are your elite troops. This isn't a rogue operation. How can we negotiate in good faith if you're simultaneously planning a covert assault? John's tone was accusatory, his patience thinning. Garrus's demeanor shifted, his usual composure slipping slightly. Commander, let's not let this incident derail our progress. I will handle this matter personally. Give me some time. I'm holding you to that, Admiral. Meanwhile, I will take necessary measures to protect Aegis, John replied curtly, ending the communication. Turning back to Marcus, he ordered, Increase surveillance and prepare for a defensive stance. I don't want any surprises. Yes, sir, Marcus responded, immediately issuing commands to his team. The next few hours were tense as the crew of the USS Horizon monitored every movement around Aegis. Meanwhile, John's disappointment in the broken trust was palpable. The betrayal confirmed his worst fears about the fragility of their peace talks. Late into the night, an alarm blared. The infiltrators had made a second attempt to breach Aegis. This time, 
they were met with resistance. John's security teams, prepared and vigilant, managed to intercept the council forces before they could enter the structure. In the skirmish that followed, no lives were lost, but the confrontation left both sides on high alert. John's team captured several of the council's soldiers, and he ordered them held for questioning. Once the immediate threat was neutralized, John reviewed the security footage, his mind racing with the implications of the day's events. This aggressive move could escalate into full-scale conflict if not handled carefully. He decided to communicate directly with Earth Command, detailing the incident and requesting guidance. We need to reassess our stance here. The Council's actions suggest they might not be ready for a peaceful resolution after all, he explained in his message, the weight of command heavy on his shoulders. In his office, John sat back, weary yet resolute. The road to peace had become more complicated, but he was determined to protect Aegis and its secrets from exploitation. The betrayal had steeled his resolve. He would not allow the greed or strategic interests of any group to jeopardize a discovery that belonged to all of humanity. The USS Horizon braced for the inevitable confrontation. Commander John Alden surveyed the situation from the bridge, his crew ready at their stations, each person acutely aware of the gravity of their circumstances. After the failed infiltration attempt by the Galactic Council's forces, tensions had escalated rapidly, leading to a standoff that could no longer be resolved by diplomacy alone. Prepare all defensive systems. I want non-lethal measures prioritized. We're here to protect Aegis, not start a war, John instructed his crew, his voice firm, broadcasting his resolve throughout the ship. On the main screen, the Galactic Council's fleet was now fully mobilized, a formidable array of warships positioning themselves around Aegis. Admiral Garrus, visible on the communication screen, had a grim expression. Commander Alden, you are harboring fugitives and have denied us access to Aegis. We are authorized to retrieve our personnel and secure the structure by force if necessary. John responded, Admiral, we've offered to return your personnel. As for Aegis, we must defend its integrity and the safety of my crew. I urge you one last time to stand down and discuss this peacefully. Garrus shook his head. I'm afraid we're past negotiations, Commander. As the transmission ended, a silent signal seemed to ripple through the Council's fleet. A barrage of energy pulses headed towards the horizon and Aegis. The battle had begun. Activate Aegis's shield systems now, John commanded. Dr. Leo Maxwell, who had been coordinating with the horizon from within Aegis, responded over the comm link. Shields are holding, but we need to minimize any direct hits. The structure isn't designed for sustained combat. John watched as the horizon's advanced defensive systems intercepted incoming fire, the energy absorbed and deflected by their shields. Target their weapon systems. Disable. Don't destroy. We need to de-escalate this situation quickly. The Horizon's gunners adjusted their systems, launching countermeasures designed to disable the Council's weapons temporarily. The battle was intense, with both sides exchanging fire in a high-stakes dance of attack and defense. Meanwhile, inside Aegis, Leo and his team worked frantically to harness the structure's more mysterious capabilities. I've found something, John. It looks like a sonic disruption field. It should disable their ships without causing permanent damage. Do it, John replied, watching another volley of energy pulses coming dangerously close to breaching their shields. Leo activated the newly discovered system. A deep, resonating pulse emitted from Aegis, invisible but powerfully effective. The Council's ships faltered, their systems overwhelmed by the sonic disruption. One by one, their weapons went offline, their ships drifting harmlessly. On the bridge of his flagship, Admiral Garrus witnessed his fleet's sudden incapacitation. Cease fire! Cease fire! He ordered, realizing the futility of continuing the fight under these conditions. Commander Alden, we are standing down. Let's discuss how we can resolve this without further conflict. John sighed in relief the immediate threat neutralized but aware of the diplomatic hurdles that still lay ahead. Admiral, let's meet on neutral ground. I propose a conference aboard Aegis. It's time we truly understood what we're fighting over. Garrus agreed, and preparations were made for a ceasefire and subsequent talks. John turned to his crew, his expression one of cautious optimism. Well done, everyone. You've defended Aegis and potentially opened a door to a peaceful resolution. 
As the crews of both the Horizon and the Council's fleet began the process of standing down, John reflected on the events. The battle, while brief, had shown the potential for devastating conflict over control of alien technologies. He knew the importance of the upcoming negotiations, not just for Aegis, but for the future of human interactions with the Galactic Council. The bridge crew busied themselves with post-battle procedures, but there was a palpable sense of pride among them. They had not only protected a significant archaeological find, but it also preserved the lives of everyone involved. After the climactic battle at Aegis, a fragile calm settled over the megastructure. Commander John Alden stood in the conference room aboard Aegis, now converted into a neutral meeting space for the forthcoming diplomatic talks. Representatives from both the Galactic Council and Earth Command were present, their previous hostilities temporarily shelved in favor of a tentative diplomacy. Admiral Garrus was the first to break the silence, extending a hand to John in a gesture of reconciliation. Commander, the Council regrets the escalation that led to the conflict. We are here today to ensure that such misunderstandings are avoided in the future. John accepted his handshake, his expression serious but open. Thank you, Admiral. Let's work together to secure a peaceful exploration of Aegis. We share a common goal, a safer and more knowledgeable galaxy. The talks that followed focused on establishing a framework for joint operations at Aegis. This included shared access to the research data, equal representation in all scientific endeavors, and the establishment of a mutual defense pact concerning the security of the megastructure. The negotiations were exhaustive and detailed, with both sides keen to cover all possible contingencies. Dr. Leo Maxwell, who had been instrumental in unlocking the secrets of Aegis, contributed significantly to the discussions. We have uncovered evidence of an ancient civilization that predates known galactic history by millennia. The technology here could advance our understanding of energy, space travel, and even the fundamental laws of physics, he explained during his presentation to the assembly. As part of the agreement, a new governance body was formed, the Aegis Consortium, comprising members from both human and council factions. John was appointed as one of the co-chairs, a role he accepted with a sense of duty and optimism. In the weeks that followed, Aegis became a hub of activity. Scientists and researchers from across the galaxy visited the megastructure, conducting experiments and studies that were openly shared among all participating species. The data gleaned from these efforts began to reshape previously held scientific assumptions, propelling technological advancements at an unprecedented pace. John often walked through the halls of Aegis, observing the cooperative efforts, the sight of former adversaries collaborating on projects, sharing insights, and celebrating discoveries together, was a profound testament to the potential for unity and diversity. One evening, as the sun set over Aegis, casting long shadows through the massive viewports, John met with Admiral Garrus for a casual review of the progress. They stood side by side, looking out at the teams working late into the night. It's remarkable, isn't it? From conflict to collaboration all within the span of a few months, Garrus remarked, a note of genuine wonder in his voice. It is, John agreed. It goes to show that common interests can bridge even the deepest divides, and Aegis is just the beginning. Their conversation was interrupted by a young researcher who approached them excitedly. Commanders, you'll want to see this. We've just made a breakthrough in the energy modulation experiments. It could revolutionize space travel as we know it. Both leaders followed the researcher to the lab, eager to witness the new discovery firsthand. This breakthrough, like many others that had occurred since the establishment of the Aegis Consortium, would soon be shared across the galaxy, further cementing Aegis's role as a beacon of hope and cooperation. As John watched the demonstration, his thoughts drifted to the future. Aegis was not just a testament to the past, but a gateway to a new era. An era where the pursuit of knowledge and the spirit of cooperation could lead to wonders beyond any single species achieving alone. As the weeks turned into months, the Aegis Consortium solidified its role as a pioneering force in galactic cooperation. Commander John Alden, reflecting on the tumultuous events that led to the formation of the Consortium, found himself frequently in discussions to assess their ongoing progress 
and plan future initiatives. One crisp morning, with Aegis backdropped against the vast expanse of space, John met with Admiral Garrus and other representatives from the Galactic Council. They convened in a newly established conference room designed to represent both human and alien architectural influences, a symbol of their united purpose. John initiated the meeting with a firm nod. Ladies and gentlemen, since our last meeting, we've launched three interstellar missions based on the technologies deciphered here at Aegis. Each mission has not only been successful, but has exceeded our expectations in the breadth of data collected. Admiral Garrus, who had become not just a counterpart but a confidant to John, responded, The Council views this partnership as one of our most successful ventures. Your leadership, Commander Alden, has been instrumental. We are now prepared to expand the Consortium's influence, possibly incorporating more member species. John appreciated the Admiral's words. Thank you, Admiral. Integration of other species and their technologies will undoubtedly enhance our collective capabilities. However, it's vital that we maintain our foundational principles, transparency, equality, and mutual benefit. Any expansion should be approached with careful diplomacy and consideration. As the meeting progressed, the discussion shifted toward the educational and cultural exchanges that had begun to flourish as a result of their collaborations. Universities across human-controlled space and council territories had opened new programs dedicated to studying the sciences and arts of each other's cultures, further promoting unity and understanding. Indeed, the impact of our work here extends beyond science and exploration, commented Dr. Leo Maxwell, who was now overseeing the consortium's research division. Our cultural exchange programs have helped demystify many of the prejudices that once fueled conflicts. It's a testament to what we can achieve when we look beyond our differences. Admiral Garris nodded. It's a new era for all of us, marked by shared knowledge and newfound respect. Let us ensure this continues. As the meeting concluded, John stayed back to gaze out the viewport at Aegis. The megastructure, once a source of mystery and conflict, had become a beacon of hope, a symbol of what could be achieved when diverse worlds united under common goals. Later that day, John recorded a message to Earth Command and the Galactic Council, summarizing the achievements and future directions of the Consortium. His words were not just a report, but a call to action for continued support and expansion of their collaborative efforts. The Aegis Consortium has not only averted a potential galactic crisis, but has paved the way for a future where the stars are within reach of all civilizations, working as equals. Let this be our legacy, that when faced with adversity, we chose cooperation over conflict, knowledge over ignorance. After sending his message, John walked through the corridors of Aegis, stopping by various labs and greeting the researchers and engineers, humans and aliens alike. Their enthusiastic work and the camaraderie that filled the halls were a daily reminder of the significance of their ongoing mission. That evening, as John watched another sunset from the viewport, the stars twinkling brightly as if nodding in approval, he felt a profound sense of peace and purpose. Aegis was more than a structure or a project. It was a testament to humanity's potential to lead and unify. The future was indeed bright filled with possibilities and the promise of new horizons, not just for humans, but for all species in the galaxy.